If you've been paying attention to the news, you you know of these two stories. Uh, there is the professor of law, not a lawyer, mind you, uh, who wrote uh, almost a poetic piece. Was it the Huffington Post or was it the Atlantic? Doesn't matter. She used the solar eclipse as a means by which to have yet. Uh, uh, I don't know if you if if you guys have heard of this thing. Of this thing called racism. I know I know. none of you have heard anything about this in the news. No one writes about racism. We really ought to have a conversation about it someday. Uh, but there is one Alice Ristroff that wrote an article uh, highlighting how the solar eclipse is going to go through white America. I mean, and, and a lot of people are saying, well, she's not saying solar eclipses are racist, but the point is, like, God almighty, what can you worthless leftist academians what what when when does logic or reality take place and this is the cost and consequences of never setting foot in the real world and we're going to look into this gal later and then there was the article about uh one sophia jackson uh, she is the co-director of university of southern california black student assembly and she was claiming that the trojans horse the the mascot he comes in on a horse and that the horse, well, let me just read some of it here from Fox News. Some students are claiming USC's longtime mascot, a white horse, is a racist symbol. The horse is named Traveler, which was also the name of Confederate General Robert E. Lee's horse. The name was called out recently by a leader of the USC Black Student Assembly at a rallying following the Charlottesville riots. The Los Angeles Times reported at the rally, according to the student newspaper, The Daily Trojan, Sophia Jackson, co-director of the USC Black Student Assembly, asked students not to be quiet and reminded that white supremacy supremacy hits close to home and referenced the name of the Trojan's mascot. The Black Student Assembly did not respond to requests for comment, but the question Questions about the name's provenance have increased on social media in the midst of the national discussion on race. And so while the, the media rightfully so highlights these fools, these 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 morons, uh, who are presumably very educated. One's a, one's a doctor. She has her doctorate in law. She is a professor. And the other is just, I already forgot her name, another, another sheep. Look at the color of my skin. Oh, woe is me. Oh, what should I do? K through 12 indoctrinators, K th- I should go and claim that I'm bigoted and discriminated against to the point there's no intelligence. There's no sign of intelligence because there's no judgment. Like, like it, it's just, it's an algorithm. They're automatons. Really think about it. This woman, whatever her name was, Sophia, Sophia, if she was truly a sentient human being with her own consciousness and intelligence, you would draw the line and say, oh, wait, you know, Traveler, what is, oh, why did they call it? What does it matter? It's a horse. It's a, and you would say, that has nothing to do with it. Not one person in the world would think that has to do with racism. Same thing with another one uh, from the black community. I hate to say the black community because I know there's a lot of uh, you black gentlemen and ladies out there like, whoa, whoa hang on. <laughs> it's not our team. <laughs> don't, don't, don't line them up with us. But the, uh, the former or current Black Panther who's agent now, who said that we should not have power washers. We shouldn't power wash sidewalks. The city should not be power washing sidewalks because that would trigger people and have post-traumatic stress. Those are aggressions, microaggressions, that would trigger those who got blasted with water cannons back in the 60s during race riots or civil uh, racial uh, protests back in the day. And power washers would uh, trigger them back to that chaotic moment and they have post-traumatic stress. So the point I'm making is that these people do not have intelligence. They are not intelligent people. Because an intelligent person, it, it, uh, contrast with a computer that just runs a, runs a program, it doesn't have the ability to judge. It's programmed to run one particular way. Run this script, run this algorithm, run this command line. Uh, a human would say, oh, wait a minute, we got context. Oh, that's, you know, for reasons and, and, and things that are not accessible to a computer. Uh, you know, this is why we have consciousness, sentience. We can be judges. We don't just run the script. Well, apparently not. And apparently this is evidence that these people, including the professor that I'll get to, they're scripted. 
They're automatons. They are, this is empirical evidence, proof that these people have been brainwashed. They have, you could call it a narrative, but I would call it indoctrination brainwashing a program. And like the sheep and the automatons, they are not intelligent, individualistic human beings. They run the script. Oh, fine. And, and in the case of the horse or in the case of the pressure washing, uh, it's racism. Everything must tie to racism. Racism, 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 because that's how we get our gimme dats. Always go for the victim. Always, we're always victims no matter what. Find it. Find a reason. Now, the professor who wrote the article about the solar eclipses highlighting race, now she's not black, but again, it doesn't matter what your race is here. She too has been programmed. Racism, discrimination, victimhood, more money, gimme dats. That's what it is. There's not a sign of intelligence amongst these people. Now, what the media didn't do is they didn't go and look up the backgrounds of these two people. And it's not going to be a shock to anybody here. You guys know you're smarter than the average bear. So let's take a look at Alice Ristroff. Sadly, she is a cute redhead. If she put on some makeup, you go go look up her, 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 her uh, what is it, uh, bio, CV, whatever. This is a gal that you could tell it's in her eyes. Like if she just put on some makeup, she had the potential, unlike most feminists and leftist females, she has the potential or had the potential, because she looks like she's about 40 now, to, to get herself a guy. This could have been a nice, beautiful woman at one time. She could maybe get, as the sun sets on her youth and beauty, she might be able to eke out another five, maybe 10 years, but I don't, she's so indoctrinated and so fallen into the leftist uh, religion that, that she's not going to give up on that. But you look at this and like, dang, that, that, you know, what was she like 20 years ago? Woo! Get, grow her hair out long, maybe curl it up a little bit, put on just a, a she has no makeup, no makeup. So here she is, Alice Ristroff. Uh, Alice Ristroff uh, joined the faculty in 2017. This is from brooklynlaw.edu, Brooklyn Law. I wonder, hang on, let's, let's take a look. Is this a highly ranked one? I don't think it's a tier one. U.S. News. <sighs> Brooklyn Law. Number 88. <laughs> it tied. It tied for 88. $1,526 per credit. Per credit. <laughs> uh, what is it? The law school has 157 full time. What tier is this? Three or two? I don't know. It ain't one of the top 14. All right, so this is a gal. I'm going to speculate. I could be wrong. She went and got her law degree. She couldn't become a lawyer because she probably went to a crappy law school. And now she's a professor at a crappy law school. They they just live off of their own, guys. You want to talk about a Ponzi scheme? Look at leftist liberal arts professors and law professors as well. Are they out doing law? Or are they simply reteaching the same worthless crap that they couldn't get a career with? Okay, so L.S. Ristroff joined the faculty in 2017. She teaches and writes in criminal law and procedure, constitutional law and political theory with particular emphasis on issues of violence and resistance. How is that a codified thing? I know, they can make a study out of anything. Toenail fungus. Actually, that has more scientific validity as a, as a scientific study because there is some STEM and science in there. Her recent work examines laws that regulate state violence, focusing especially on the loss distribution of risks of physical harm. She also has been studying ways in which the law suppresses, tolerates, or even facilitates various forms of resistance to criminal justice institutions. Her scholarship has appeared in Duke Law Journal, Yale Law Journal, California Law Review, Constitutional Commentary, Virginia Law Review, UCA Law, Law Review, and other journals that I'm sure you and all your friends subscribe to. They didn't have that in there. Professor Ristroff as a member of the American Law Institute, she serves on the executive committee of the AALS section on jurisprudence. In the fall of 2017, Professor Ristoff will be visiting Harvard Law before the BLS van litigation. Oh, before entering law teaching, she was a litigation associate of Paul Weiss, Rifkin, Wharton, and Garrison in New York City. She received her JD and PhD from Harvard University. How the heck aren't you? That's Okay. She went to a real law school. That's one, that's, one, that's one of the tier one. Why is she? All right, let's take a look at the CV. Why? I don't want to download the CV. All right. 
How much you want to bet she's in a STEM major? Okay. Professor, 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 professor. She has been a professor, fellow. God almighty. Where's her private sector experience? I don't see any of it. She's not even on a resume. She's just a professor this entire time. She's been a professor since 2005. That's the earliest. Now we go to the education. She got her law degree in 2001. She has her undergrad in government. Okay, so worthless degree. She had no intention of working a real job. So somewhere between 2001 and 2000... Well, wait. Minus three... No, two from the PhD. She graduated 2004. So she started 2002. Did she work a year? In the private sector, or did she just go right for... See, and with you got a, G, a JD. Can't you go teach? Isn't that a PhD? Oh, she got a PhD in government. So another worthless degree. Uh, book, articles. God, is she even going to list her private sector experience? No. She just attended a bunch... It's sad when you're listing all the seminars. Look at this. Page 7. Three of which is... Just seminars you attended. What does this have to do? Seminars? Good Lord, is that a thing? Uh, other experience? Here we go. Columbia Law, Associate in Law. Okay, yeah. So she she worked her... Paul Weiss, Rifkin, Wharton, and Garrison. She worked her paltry year and a half, two years in the private sector. And then went right back to the warm womb of world, real world avoidance in academia and, and that is where she has stayed I mean again is it is uh, the left and especially the academian left are going to espouse the stupidest crap ever but I just want to point this is what happens when you don't work in the real world this is what happens when you never grow up you think that you you're, you're going to you're going to stretch and try to find a way your life is so sad. Your intellect is so stunted and, and retarded. I don't mean that in like, duh, retarded. But like, I mean, I mean as in the fire was retarded. The literal definition. Your, your intellect is so retarded and, and handicapped and crippled that you're, even with a doctorate, with a doctorate, your best use of time is to, is to tie solar eclipses to racism. And it was a lengthy piece. It was a long... I tried to read it. I'm like, I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just not going to waste my time. I don't have to read a the 10,547th article about why I'm a racist person even though I don't understand it. You know, I, don't, I don't need to read that. All right, then we go... Let's look up Sophia Jackson. There is no... Uh, she has a LinkedIn thing here. Nowhere near quite as lengthy... The entry is uh, Dr. Rostroff, uh, Bachelor's of Arts in Philosophy, Politics, and Law. She is a sophomore. Activities in society, she's for speech, empowerment, muriality, visions, and voices. What the hell is that? Speech, empowerment, muriality? Uh, USC Arts and Humanities Initiative Environmental Student Assembly, Black Student Assembly. Um, hang on, let's look at this. Speech empower empowerment muriality. I love how 17 and 18 year olds think that they can be taught leadership and, and, and leadership and organizational management. Management and leadership. Oh, empowerment. <laughs> muriality. What is that? Empowerment of women, na na na. Okay, that doesn't come up. Let's. Just, I wonder what Muir reality is. What is this? USC Muir reality. What is Muir reality? Oh, is this going to be a, another BS leftist made up thing? Founded in 2014, Muir reality is a USC officially recognized student organization with the next generation of creative mind and innovators that all what S sit and think the exact same. It's already been displayed. That Sophia Jackson and the likes of her lack genuine human intelligence. She cannot help but run the program like the book. She cannot help like, like a, a laptop or an apple. Cannot help but run the code, run the script, 
and take horse name traveler to racism. She cannot help it. She's she's proven one of two things. She is either truly lacking human intelligence and that she's and therefore if you lack human intelligence, you're an individuality and sentientness, you are not going to be creative. You are a program. You are you are an automaton. Automatons do not create, they obey. Or she knows damn well what she's doing and she is insistent on taking everything to an absurd level and turning it into racism so she could get free money and free hand-me-outs and free gimme dads and assistance and legs up, privileges, uh, benefits that other people don't because she frankly doesn't want to work hard. And whereas I wish I could credit or uh, chart her, her behavior to something as malicious as that, theft, parasitism, laziness, sloth, the more and more I look at like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Professor Ristroff there writing this BS up and they actually believe it, I think she might be a true believer. She might actually think that I must take everything and convey it to racism. Imagine all the time and love and potential loss with these brains. Imagine, look, take a look at Miss Ristroff. I doubt she's married. I doubt she has a great social life. How fun is it to hang out with automatons and constantly talk about racism and sexism and politics all the time? Oh my God, could you imagine what a buzzkill these people would be? I'd rather hang out with Lord Buzz Killington than these people. So let's be very clear. This is, this is you know, when you have to say, to quote the great one himself, when you have to tell people something that you are or aren't, then you're the opposite. We're creative. No, you're not. I'm not racist. Yes, you are. <laughs> I don't hate white people. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh... Is the next generation of creative minds and innovators and those who want to support them. We take a human-centered approach to promoting and creating socially conscious art on the USC campus and LA area. We're an intersection between art and social activism. Oh, wow, that's original. Yeah, because politics hasn't taken over art at all the past 50 years, has it? Like, just yesterday, they started having political messages with art. Like... We haven't had a bunch of worthless, talentless automatons like you guys come in and then start making crappy art because you have no talent and it's really actually hard work to be a good artist and then you just throw a political message behind it and then that way you think you're an artist. And then your rich parents who have connections over at crappy art museums and modern and minimalist art museums and postmodern art museums, they get your crap like the work, heck, three-year-olds crayon drawings have more creative creativity and innovation that are stuck on people's uh, parents' uh, uh, refrigerators than there is over in the uh, Walker Arts Center or any one of these worthless, worthless, truly worthless minimalist and modern-day art museums. But you guys are just now, it's an intersectionality between art and social action activism. That is so copycat plagiarism. That's nothing new. We make an impact through art. No, you don't. You do because you make architecture and art horrible, hideous. It's an eyesore. Very closely related. All the fat people and the fat women with their piercings. and uh, For men, for men. I know men are ugly for women too with the hair buns and the salmon jeans. Women, unfortunately, have to look at this negative externality of the environment. Ugly men walking around. And men have to look at ugly, gross, fat women walking around. Just like we have to look at this minimalist, ugly architecture from the 60s and the 70s. You guys are behind by 40 years. So yeah, you make an impact. Not a positive one, a hideous one. An eyesore. It's just, oh, oh. What do we do? We make collaborative projects and we are a network of artists and art lovers by creating a large-scale installations including a women's empowerment mural with I am the girl made of recycled materials. <laughs> oh, you know, here's here take a look at this. If you look, you can take a look at their artwork. They got an artwork of balloons. Uh, it's it's got some lights and it's not even balloons. I think they just blew up a bunch of plastic bags. What the hell? Uh, women empower, women's empowerment mural with a I am that girl made from recycled materials. Artist promotional events like Underground and Lemonade and Art on the Wheels, a mobile gal- a gallery. Muriality has created impacts on and around campus through art. Our artist workshop series, art retreats, and creating a benefit concert of, in collaboration with Hollywood Records. 
are ways in which we have expanded our reach and diversified our marketing strategies to involve a multifaceted... Dude, that is way too many words to say we go begging for money and hope people hire us. Otherwise, we get grant money because no one wants to hire us because we are not artists. Our art is not good enough to have people willingly fork over money, so we have to go steal it from the taxpayers. Our past sponsors, past partners and sponsors. Uh, recognition from the USC Undergraduate Student Government, the Roski School of Art and Design, and the USC Events and Venues. We have collaborated with not one private company. Not one private company. Oh, here we go. Our corporate partners have included. Now, did they give you money? Disney's Music Groups, Hollywood Recordings, Fairfax Recordings, Genetic Denim, Los Angeles, and Los Angeles Lakers. How do I join? Are you ready to collaborate? Yes, I got to see what we got to see what their gallery looks like. Past work. Oh, guys, you got to look at this. This is this is horrible. Oh, they're doing finger painting. Look at this. This is art. This is art. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, they made shirts? Look at that. She made a shirt. Oh, wow. Guys, you want to see some of the crappiest art ever? Spring 2016 projects. What's to come? Well, they're obviously not active anymore. This guy literally has a picture of a blank wall. Oh, man. Oh, Anything to avoid a real job, hey guys? Anything to avoid uh, to avoid effort and work and toil, huh? All right, so uh, that's he's executive marketing producer of the Environmental Student Assembly, executive creative director, secretary, and vice president of partnerships of Reality, assistant communications director for speech. But do you have a job? I'm not kidding. I'll hire I'll hire a kid that works security or works like uh, uh, the the food service. But that's beneath you, right? You're too smart for that, right? Regurgitating everything and tying it to racism and sexism and oppression so you could get more free gimme that. Do you have any intention to work, Miss Jackson? Any? Ah. We all know the answer. Member representative of Blackstone Assembly, coaching corpse coach. Here's a question I have for Professor Ristroff and Miss Jackson, Sophia Jackson. What if everybody did what you guys would do? Would society be able to survive? I mean, what what value do you bring to society? You guys don't do anything of value for society. You are pariahs. You are parasites. You don't produce anything of value. Uh, You go to an engineer. Oh, I can make electricity. You go to a mechanic. I can get the cars running. You go to a petroleum engineer. Oh, I can get oil out of the ground. But if everybody did, if everybody majored in the liberal arts, you'd die. Society would die. We wouldn't make it a year because no one's growing any food. No one's producing any paper. No one's paving any roads. No no one's doing... Nobody. You guys just want to live off of society. And instead of just collecting a check, you got to come up with some fake fabricated faux industry, faux profession, made completely of taxpayer and parasitic dollars. So you have your egos masturbated. And so don't be surprised when you have someone who is this hypocritical. This intellectually weak, this intellectually lazy, that they come up with the most stupid of things like, hey, eclipses are racist, and so are horses named Traveler. She's getting her degree in philosophy, politics, and law. And then I love how she's like following the London School of Economics, political science. She follows Ariana Huffington, who inherited all of her money. Oh. It's a question I want to ask of every 16, 17, 18, 19 year old student out there, high school or college, who's thinking about majoring in the liberal arts, or for those of you who are leftists and actually believe this. Look, look at these people. All right, this is apolitical. Let's take politics out of it. Do you really want to become these people? Do you really want to become these people? Alice Ristroff, do you want to just like sit in academia all day to the point that you think the best expenditure of your time is to go and write a nearly 5,000 word article relating solar eclipses to racism? Heck, just writing about racism, has it not been covered enough? You're not breaking any new ground, you're not making any new 
for you're certainly not solving the problem i love how the left the entire left all they do is bitch whine moan and complain but there's no solutions except we need more money which hasn't worked in the past 60 years if you haven't noticed and then think about becoming uh the sophia again where where are you mentally in your life and in your own brain that you think you actually think in your mind the mascot not the mascot the horse that the mascot rides on his name happens to be traveler and you tie that to a horse that was what 160 how long ago was the civil war 150 this you know it's 100 yeah 150 years ago 160 years ago if i do the math right what what if what if the guy who sold the horse, who raised the horse, he called him Traveler because he went traveling with him? I mean, what are the chances that it's actually named after the, the horse Traveler back in the olden days, Robert E. Lee's horse? And then ESPN, where they take this poor guy. I don't know if you guys heard about it or not, probably. But uh, here's this Asian dude. His name is Robert Lee. Lee is a common Asian name. He, he, born in America, obviously of, obviously of Asian descent. Uh, his last name just happens to be Lee. Has nothing to do with the Civil War general. Nothing. ESPN takes him off the beat at a college game because he's afraid that he is going to get assaulted because of his name, Robert Lee. When it's painfully obvious it's it's an Asian surname. I don't know. Maybe maybe with with Alice Ristroffs and the the sh- sh- whatever her name Miss Jackson of the world, if they are on automatic pilot, if they are on automaton, they do not have the ability to. Maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they're so conditioned and brainwashed to look for racism where it doesn't exist. They will take a completely innocent man, Robert Lee, the the Asian, not the general. And they're going to beat him up? I, I don't know. Is it is Plus, here's the problem that we face. If that's the level of lack of intellect, you are the Borg and you are the enemy. Nothing's going to get through to you guys. And the only way to respond to people like that is either through violence, like physically preventing them from doing things if they ever, they're not going to. But they're not, they don't respond to reason. They don't respond to logic. They don't respond to evidence. It, they're not going to even I don't understand what I'm saying. I'm talking like not not violence necessarily, but you can only physically interact with them. You have to restrain them physically because nothing gets through them intellectually. They are conditioned to carry out. I mean, it's it's like a it's like a robot. This robot with a gun turret is is coming towards my house. How do I stop it? There's no reasoning rationally. What you got to do is you got to put up a barricade so it can't get around, or you have to disable it, shoot it, violence. My, my larger point is not one that let's go kill. That's not it. Don't misconstrue that. My, my point is that nothing is going to get through to them with logic, reason, evidence, reality, facts, philosophy, intellectually honest. These people are totally incapable of intellectual honesty. So the only thing you can do is either avoid them or if they start threatening you directly, you have to physically restrain them because there's no talking them out of it. None. Now this poor guy, Robert Lee, is going to not have as good of a career as he could because ESPN, so oh, people might think it's racist. <laughs> and you want us to respect you. You want people on the right to respect you people in academia, not to mention ESPN. You really expect with your, with your clear as day display of your lack of inhuman intelligence, your lack of judgment, your lack of your ability to discern and your perfect display of automatonic, not thinking, programming. You expect us to respect you? You expect us to even give you a second thought? You think we're going to, we're going to, what, what? We're going to like, oh, well, they make a point. Yep. The horse is racist. That's why I should pay more taxes. <laughs> And about the only way I can see to maybe get through to these people is to mock them and ridicule them for their own benefit that they might wake up one day and realize, hey, I'm finite. And do I want to be like that guy 
who's the 75-year-old uh, Black Panther dude who thinks spraying sidewalks with pressure washers is racist. I mean, let me look that guy up. Hang on, let me look this guy up. Because let's just, he's got to have an entry or something on him. Okay, Black Panther, uh, pressure washer, spray. Uh, what would it call? Race riots? Race riots. Let's see if this comes up. From San Diego, suited, uh, no, 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 I'm getting stuff. Pressure washer, sidewalks, triggers, racism. Let's see if that comes up. Now clean poop off sidewalks. Is called, okay, yeah, here we go. See, Seattle Councilman. Uh, let's look up this guy. Outside King County. I just, I mean, for for research's sake, let's look this guy up and then look, and I'm talking to leftists. I'm talking to you, 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds, who you're going to go become a social justice warrior. You're going to change the world. This is where that path leads. So let's look at this guy saying, Larry Gossett said he didn't like the idea of power washing the sidewalks because it brought back images of those, of the use of hoses again. So, all right, let's look up Larry Gossett. Close out of this ad. And I'll go through his background and you tell me, because uh, uh, Miss Jackson is young. She's still very young. So she has her whole life to turn around. She has her whole life to go like become an accountant, become an engineer, go do something, quit wasting her life, hating on white people, hating on thinking everybody's out to get you. And then... Um, Alice Ristroff, she's middle-aged. She could turn around half her life. Maybe she could get herself a guy. Maybe. I mean, it might be a little bit too late for her to... Um, okay, he's born 45. It might be a little bit too late for her to you know, have a family. All right, Larry, da, 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 da. American politician. Okay, native of Seattle, graduate 1963, Franklin High School, University of Washington, Vista Volunteer. Draft deferment, politicized and radicalized and returning to Seattle, became a founder of the Black Student Union, helped organize nearly a dozen high school, middle school, black student unions throughout Seattle, student activist, he was instrumental and also played a role in discrimination. He graduated from the UW in 1970, receiving the university's first ever degree in African-American studies. He's okay, he's poor, all he's been doing, look. Not that, not the. There's nothing wrong with protesting against actual racism or other social injustices. Absolutely, go ahead. But ladies and gentlemen, think of this guy's life. It's all it's been for him is racism. Do you ever think about going having fun? Like R.J. Jones, R.J. Jones, black kid. You know what he does? He just he went up to Banff. He sent me pictures. Hey, look at you. You're enjoying life. You're in probably good. He says, yeah, I think I want to go to Morocco and ride a camel. I'm like, well, can you afford the fight? He's like, yeah. He's going and living life. He's not steeping and stewing himself in hate. His entire career is not uh, stick it to the man. And then here's this guy. He gets his first ever university degree in, in, a, worthless, in a fake subject. Before he, he had even re, formally received his BA, he became the first supervisor of the Black Student Division in the University Office of Minorities Affairs, the Seattle Civil Rights and Labor History Project. Describes him as being late citizen, no black young man, yeah, former da, da da Still working for UW, was involved in occupation. Central La Raza. 1979 till December 1993, is executive director of Seattle's Central Area Motivation Program. Found his way back in electoral progress, politics by way of involvement in Jesse Jackson's presidential campaigns. Well, those were really successful. 1990, run unopposed. Now, he's had a great political career, avoiding the real jobs in the real world for so long. Do you think he's happy? Do you think in his mind that, that, and think about this, all these poor black youth that actually listened to this guy and believed him. And this is the guy saying that we shouldn't have pressure washers on sidewalks because that'll trigger people to have PSTD from the race riot days. Are you joking me? What is that like waking up in the morning and the first thing in your mind is, how is Whitey screwing me over today? How am I oppressed today? 
You don't look outside and see the sun. You don't look outside and maybe I'll go for a run. Hey, I got some nieces and nephews. Well, I got family. Certainly not in case of Miss Astroff. Oh, I'm going to go and create a new internet digital thingy. Oh, I might join the military and serve my country. All these other things you could choose. All of them. All of them. And he chooses to stew in hatred and the past. And that's where that life leads. That's where the life leads. The social justice warrior, woe is me, victim of nearly all the liberal arts and all the social sciences, that's where they lead. You're not learning about Plato. You're not learning about philosophy. You're not learning about history. It's all oppression, hatred, seething, stewing, rage, injustice, unfairness, not, nothing good, nothing good, nothing happy, nothing, nothing beautiful. No one studies real art anymore. No one study, No one creates any real art anymore. No one writes any real good books anymore. No, it's all crap. It's all bad. It's how am I oppressed? How should I feel oppressed? As evidenced by the immediate, the, the shortest distance, like electricity. Let's find the shortest distance between this phenomenon in the world, no matter what it is, and how it's racist or oppressive or sexist or whatever. And for those of you who are looking, right now you get a choice. You could go down fields, college, trade school, military, whatever, where there's production and value at the end. You have money, you have a social life, you can have family, you can have friends. Or you join a religion, that's basically your other, it is a religion, boys and girls, it is a religion. You go down the path and it's not a happy religion. Heck, Islam is a, a funner, more optimistic hat. At least there's 72 virgins at the end of that one. This one, I don't know what it is. Hate, more hate, jealousy, envy, being constantly unhappy and pissed off for your entire life. Are you joking me? I know. No one listens to this. No one listens to this. But no one's going to listen to it. I'll put it up on YouTube. Maybe somebody will share it with young kids, young boys and girls, but... It's, you can, what, from these three people, Larry Gossett, uh, Miss Jackson, I forget her first name, and Alice Astroff. Look at them. Look at them and ask yourself, male, female, white, black, gay, straight, do you want to live these people's lives? Do you want to wake up and say, wow, look at that eclipse. That was the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. That was, and do you want your brain to immediately default towards racism and hate and all the pressure and stress that comes with that? Or you just want to say, wow, that's really cool. You know, that's got me interested in astronomy. I should go study the moon. I should go study Jupiter in the solar system. I want, and what's going to make you happier? What's going to make you a better person? What's really going to truly expand your mind? The same broken record of racism, racism, sexism, sexism, misogyny, misogyny. That? Really? You don't have enough of that? Or... Just pioneering. Not even, It's been pioneered before. It's been discovered. But for you, our own personal intellect, your own personal brain, for your own food of consumption, do you want to change your diet from racism, racism, racism to astronomy, philosophy, humor, comedy, literature, uh, theater, all this stuff this world offers? All, out of all of it, ask yourself what kind of mentality, what kind of intellect, what kind of mental stability, what kind of brain do you have will you just choose to obsess and narrowly and only focus on isms and ists? I don't, I don't want to become that person. I do not want to become that person. Not going to become that person. My life is way too short, and I like myself way too much to live the life of Larry Gossett. Or I keep wanting to call him the gal over at USC, Shania Twain. It's not it. Or uh, Miss Astroff. No way. You're not going to see me right. Oh, hey. Oh, look. There's a lunar eclipse. It's, uh, it reminds me of a vagina and the oppressive male phallic symbol. I, I, my, I'm not that sad. I'm frankly not that pathetic of a person. I have too much important crap and fun stuff going on in my life. And that's why I'm going to get on my motorcycle tomorrow and I'm going to go ride around the American West. And when I see... Mount Rushmore, or Rocky Mountain National Park, or the Badlands, or the prairies of Wyoming, I'm not going to have one thought about racism or sexism. 
I'm just gonna say, wow, that's beautiful. That's really nice. Look at that. Oh, this is this is nice being alive and enjoying life. Oh, look, hey, some curves. All right, hey, oh wow, that was fun. I I am happy. These curves represent man's obsession with the woman's breast, and they should be body positive. I don't know how you feminists and leftists live with yourself. I don't know how. All right, more sponsors. <clears throat> Now I should pull up the sponsor list. Assholeconsulting.com. If you got questions, I have answers as long as you have money. We are here to help out all of you who were brought up under broken homes, a lack of a father.